Hello, my lovely students. So now we're going to take a look at section 4.2. This is our sum and difference formulas for everybody. We are going to give you these formulas on the test, so you don't have to memorize them. You just have to remember how to use them. All right, so we start out with cosine, sure. So if you look at these formulas, the cosine of a plus b is cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. So on cosine, the sine in the middle changes. But notice they're all formatted to go a, b, a, b, or alpha, beta, alpha, beta. With the minus, alpha minus beta, it's the same setup, but now we have a plus inside. All right, so cosine changes the sign from what we're doing inside to our whole little list out here. So our first example here, find the exact value. So what we're going to get from this is something like the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4 or something. <sighs> yeah, is weird. So find the exact value of cosine of 5 pi over 4 minus pi over 6. So first, we're just going to use the formula. So we have the cosine of 5 pi over 4 minus pi over 6. All right, so our minus formula, we have cosine, cosine. This cosine changes, so this will be a plus, sine, sine. So I like to write the form, and then I go back and fill in the angles and make sure I put them in the right spots. All right, so alpha is first, so this will be 5 pi over 4, and this will be 5 pi over 4. Then the pi over 6, the minus is taken care of by the formula, so we're not including that. So it is just pi over 6 that goes here and here. Now these are things on the unit circle, so we can look them up or remember and figure them out. There we go, because my handwriting is huge. All right, so 5 pi over 4, down here in quadrant 4, and this is an over 4, 45, 45, 90, cosine and sine are the same. It's in quadrant 3, so they're both negative. So both of these... So it's negative root 2 over 2 and negative root 2 over 2. All right, and then we also need to look at pi over 6. That is our one close to the axis. Pi over 6. Let's just sneak that plus in real quick. All right, so pi over 6 goes long, then short. The square root of 3 over 2 is the long side. And then 1 half is the short side. So cosine of pi over 6 is square root of 3 over 2. The sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. All right. Now we're just cleaning it up a little bit, multiplying some stuff, seeing what we get. So I have negative square root of 2 times the square root of 3. When you multiply square roots, you can multiply the insides. So that is now negative square root of 6 over 4. And then over here, negative square root of 2 times 1 is just negative square root of 2. And then the bottom is still 4. And we often get 4s when we do these. So what we usually do to answer these is we write it all as one fraction. So this would be the negative square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4 
and that's it. So that is the pretty exact answer because you you totally will need that at some point, somewhere, right? Made more sense before we had reliable calculators. All right. So same song, second verse. We're looking at pi over 3 minus pi over 4. So that is 60 degrees minus 45 degrees. So what we're finding here is the cosine of 15, like 15 degrees. All right, still, let's start out our formula. We have cosine, cosine, changes. So this is a plus sine, sine. Pi over 3, scoot down over here for the other one, back here for the pi over 4, and here for the pi over 4. All right, well, we know our pi over 4s, and that's quadrant 1, so it's positive. Both of these are quadrant 1, so it's all going to be positive. All right, so these guys are our root 2 over 2. And now pi over 3, 60 degrees, is short long. So the cosine is 1 half, and the sine is square root of 3 over 2. And again, now we just multiply and collect it all up. So this is the square root of 2. And notice they're both going to be over 4, so I usually just jump right to this. So square root of 2 plus the square root of 6 over 4. That is the mathematically exact answer. So that is what the cosine of 15 degrees is exactly. There are times where knowing these random formulas that we're going to look at in the next few sections can be helpful in calculus for certain weird derivatives and integrals. It's also the sum formulas actually get us the double angle formulas, which are very useful. We use those all over the place. So finding the exact value using the formula for the sum of two angles of cosine. So here, they didn't give us two numbers. They're telling us to use the formula to figure this out. And then again, we're going to do it with 105. So we have to come up with two numbers on the unit circle that add to 75 degrees. And like, take a moment, be grateful they gave us degrees, otherwise we'd be doing the conversion and then back. So 75 degrees, you look on your unit circle, and smaller than 75 degrees, there's 60, 45, and 30. And 30 and 45 add up to 75. So we're not going to ask the impossible here. There will be two numbers that add up. You just might have to get, you know, look around for them. So we are going to find the cosine of 30 plus 45, or you could write it 45 plus 30. The order doesn't matter because it's plus. All right, let's get our format down. Cosine, cosine, sine, sine. Cosine changes, and now we put in the angles, 30 and 30, Forty-five and 45, and we know our 45s, square root of 2 over 2, keep our minus, all right, cosine of 30 degrees, that's Long side, short side. So the cosine is square root of 3 over 2. And the sine is 1 half. All right, so the cosine of 75 degrees will be the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. So, like... Quick gut check, 
The one we got before was square root of 2 plus square root of 6 all over 4. This one is square root of 6 minus square root of 2 over 4. So the previous one was 15 degrees. This one is 75 degrees. Now think about the values that cosine takes. The graph of cosine starts at 1, and then when it gets to pi over 2, it's at 0. 75 degrees is a lot closer to 90 to the 0 in the cosine graph. So we should be getting a smaller number. So it's weird, but that number does make sense. All right, now we've got 105 degrees. Um, well, it ends in a 5, so we're going to have to use a 45. If I take 45 away from 105, I get 60. So we are looking at the cosine of 60 plus 45. All right, so cosine, cosine. Changes, sine, sine. Sixties. Forty-five. Forty-five. And we know those forty-fives again. And doing a lot of these, like, you really get a lot more familiar with what at least the first quadrant values are. So 60 is short long, so the cosine is 1 half, and the sine is square root of 3 over 2. So this one is the square root of 2 minus the square root of 6 all over 4. And square root of 6 is bigger than the square root of 2. This will be negative. 105 degrees is bigger than 90. And in the second quadrant, cosine is negative. So we should get a negative number here. So we're just using our knowledge to check, do the answers make sense? All right, now, same song, second verse, but the sign formulas. So take a look at these for a moment. So these go sine, cosine, cosine, sine. And that keeps the A, B, A, B pattern. Now remember before I said cosine changes. Every time I was using the formula, I would say, Cosine changes to remember to change the sign. Sine stays. So alpha plus beta, it's a plus in the middle. Alpha minus beta, it's a minus in the middle. All right. So now they're giving us two different signs, 45 minus 30 and 135 minus 120. Both of those are 15. So I just wanted to show you, like, it doesn't matter which two values you pick, especially for a difference, um, you're still going to get the same result. You'll just have some negatives doing a little more dancing around in the second one. But let's go ahead and check both of these. All right, so the sine of A minus B. So we go sine, cosine. And then sine stays, so it'd be a minus cosine sine. And then we fill in the angles the same way we did before. So 45s in the front, and then 30s in the second position. All right, we know our 45s. It's root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. And our 30s, 30 degrees is long side, short side. Long side is square root of 3 over 2. Short side is then 1 half with our minus. So this is needing a little more. The square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. Cha-ching. All right, play it again, Sam. So now we have sine, cosine. Stays with a minus. Cosine, sine. One thirty-five. 
is our front angle. 120 is our second angle. All right, so 135 is a 45 derivative. So these are root 2 over root 2. But we have to remember 135 is in quadrant 2. Sine is positive. So this one will be positive root 2 over 2. But over here, the cosine will be negative root 2 over 2. All right, now our 120 is in quadrant 2. This is a 60 degree reference angle, so it's short side on the bottom, long side for the y. All right, so our sine is square root of 3 over 2, and in quadrant 2, that's positive, but the cosine will be negative 1 half. And then we keep the minus from our formula. So this becomes negative root 2 over 4 minus this is negative root 6 over 4 which becomes square root of 6 minus square root of 2 all over 4. Same answer slightly different way. So they're wacky formulas but they work out a lot. I'm gonna cut the video here and then start example 4 because I think that one's really fun. Yeah, I'm weird, but you guys knew that.